welcome to my outdoor model railway. This is just going to be a quick introduction to show you around my railway which I'll be using in future videos where I'll be covering the um, automation of the model railway using a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino and some of the models that I've been making using 3D design software. And, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you around. So here is my garden. As you can see, this is on quite a slope and the model railway is right at the very far end of the garden. Uh, this, um, just to illustrate the reason that I've chosen that area of the garden and uh, some of the uh, issues or, or restrictions that have uh, influenced the design of my model railway. Now as I walk up the garden I um, should appreciate this is quite a bit of a slope and it would be unsuitable for running most trains and reach the top of the garden and you'll see that we've got a relatively flat piece of ground which is where the majority of the railway has been run. So as you can see, the majority of the railway is directly on the ground. I uh, know um, a lot of people prefer to mount their railway raised off the ground. There's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, one is because I wanted to um, include model scenery and I think that looks better when it's at the same level as the railway. And the other is due to this um, step configuration. Uh, if I'd, I wanted to keep this um, as a full loop and if I'd raised this above the ground on the top part of the garden then it would have made it quite a challenge to be able to go over that and use this garden for other purposes. So instead I decided to bring it out of the front of this small wall um, on some wooden trellis and um, bring it underneath these steps that I've built um, to raise the existing steps over the railway. Um, so I come back, it looks like there's a bit of a slope on the, um, on the railway, which uh, th there is and it is intentional. It's just enough to be able to uh, provide enough clearance underneath that step without having to create the steps too high. And although this um, is sloping, it's actually not actually the steepest part of the, the railway. The steepest part is in fact here that, that would look as though it's flat, but in fact uh, there is still a, a level of uh, slope on this uh, flatter part of the garden. Um, but um, running um, analog electrical trains here and these are um, able to take these uh, small gradients okay. So I've not got any uh, trains on at the moment, I'll be showing you them um, shortly. I'll just carry on having a look around. So one of the things I had to build was this, uh, this miniature hill here. I've used a little bit of concrete um, on top to, to give a level surface. Inside there are a couple of breeze blocks and to give it some strength. There's the uh, first of my models, it's a 3D printed uh, campsite and, and that's been shown in another video and I'll hopefully create another video showing how you can design models like that in using Tinkercad. The track is then laid on top of artificial grass and um, I've just covered the edge in of the garden in artificial grass mainly because of uh, costs and time involved um, but it means that I can leave a normal lawn in the center of the this part of the garden. I had to create another wooden step here to um, get onto the the back part of the garden um, where my shed is uh, Uh, so I've got a second inner loop here. At uh, the moment it doesn't really look much. Uh, looking for ideas, not really sure what to put inside it to try and break it up because 
obviously it just it does just look as a, a loop at the moment this is r1 curves which isn't ideal um but it's the only way i could fit it onto this and this is an existing base from a an old wendy house that used to be here so i'll look at doing something on that in future here's a um, 3d printed um, model building it's located where my station will go but this won't be my station building it's uh, it's actually Weybridge um, located off the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway um, and I've created another video about that so you can if you check out my channel you'll be able to see that and you see I've, I've put some ballast on some parts of this um, but I've not finished doing that yet so there's still quite a bit of work to do uh, just show you how I've done the raised section of the track so it's just some wooden posts that are driven into the ground and then a large piece of thin timber that's laid on top and roofing felt to waterproof that I've used uh, plastic edging for patio doors uh, along the sides to hold it in place which has just been stapled in and then it's been coloured uh, silver instead of the white that it was originally now this isn't the the final finish I'd like to make um, this look, look more like a bridge I've, I've got ideas of either 3d printing some con some brick supports and maybe putting some uh, some more metal like work around the uh, around the track and at this side i've put artificial grass underneath it again because i can't really cut the grass underneath there wouldn't get the lawnmower in um, i've started to put some ballast in there as well i've put a couple of plants in the the hills that i created so i really need to uh, landscape those um, properly um, so that's a future job as well still rather a lot to do um, but it's making good progress this is designed for running analog electrical trains so there's um, power to the track as you can see i've installed several of these um, terminal blocks which you've got some uh, wires that are run out to the track where they're soldered in place these are, are run around the railway so they're attached at various places and they all go back to this control box so inside here is a um, transformer it uh, goes down to 19 volts dc and then inside here and i've yet to label these up properly there's a Raspberry Pi and a motor controller um, which can be turned on and off using these switches so that would power on the Raspberry Pi and these enable track 1, track 2 from the Raspberry Pi and then this one enables um, a DC power supply that runs around the track that I can tap off as well if I want to use it manually. Um, the important thing is that um, the Raspberry Pi and manual control are never connected to the same track at the same time which is why there's these isolating switches if so then if one tries to drive the train in one direction and the other the other that will create a short circuit because it's run off the same power supply um, but to protect against that there is a fuse inside that will just blow so if I want to control it using analog then um, I've got a little breakout box here, perhaps I'm going to add another one that has a DIN connector which can be connected to the normal uh, manual remote control or this could be used if I wanted to uh, control it using uh, thinking about uh, creating a Arduino based controller that we should plug into there rather than using the Raspberry Pi I um, also mentioned a while that the, um, the Raspberry Pi has got Wi-Fi connection back to the house and um, I need to run a I need to, to use a repeater in the garden to get it out this far and uh, that's just powered on as required uh, for that and then the final thing 
point out for now um, is that there's a small reed switch here. Now, I'm actually going to replace this reed, reed switch. Um, I'm trying some different ones because these um, this is a glass one and these keep breaking. Um, so I've uh, I've got some more, uh, hopefully more rugged ones that I'm going to try. Um, but this is part of the automation as the train comes in. Uh, it the reed switch detects the presence of a magnet on the train and will um, have the train slowly slow down into the station. And it stays at the station for a while and then um, when the uh, after time for the passengers to to get off and on then it will pick up and, and drive around the track again. So that's it for now. Um, I'm going to um, show you some videos of, uh, of the trains running and uh, make sure you, uh, you follow my channel if you uh, click the subscribe button um, to be able to get notified when I create some more videos about the railway and how parts of it work um, if you're interested in creating yourself. So I hope you liked that. Uh, please uh, click like and share if you did. Um, leave me any comments in the, the bottom, uh, if you, particularly if you've got any suggestions on what you'd like to see, or ideas for what I can do with the uh, inside the oval track. And uh, so please subscribe and if you click the message um, bell icon you'll get notified when I create a new video so that you can find out more about how the various parts of the railway work.